Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing my review for the Batman. Um, went to go see this yesterday. I waited a day to like get my thoughts together, what I thought, and also because I couldn't be asked yet, but now I can, so yep. If you do enjoy the video, please do like and subscribe, and yeah, we're just going to get straight into it. So, with an almost three hour runtime, this film it, it is, whew, it is something. I mean, this is like the best solo superhero film. That's a stretch, but I think it might be one of the best solo superhero films of all time. And here's... I'm just going to get straight into the reasons why. Okay, so first off, Gotham itself. I think this is the best on-screen portrayal of Gotham I've ever seen. It combines all the best parts from the original 1970s, I mean 80s Batman, through to um, like the realism of the um, Nolan trilogy. It, I mean, this Gotham is, is really, like, dark and gringy. Like, you see the dark corner it literally emphasizes that they're scared of the criminals are scared of the darkness and it always rains in gotham which also adds to the continuity later on in the film which i will not spoil for anyone who hasn't seen it this is a spoiler free review so yep just letting that letting you know that but yep this gotham is beautiful it shows it, sh it doesn't shy away from showing gotham in all, all its angles there's got a Times square region which is just beautiful we see we see bruce wayne drive past that a few times this this shows the darkest parts of Gotham and and since the film's mostly at night because it's Batman obviously, the the color scheme for this film really shines through. That red really really works well. Robert Pattinson's portrayal as Batman and Bruce Wayne is excellent. I mean everyone hated on this guy when uh, he was first cast, but look at him. If you look if you look at some of the old two early two thousand six seven eight cartoons of Batman, he is he looks like this. This is what Bruce Wayne looks like and most of the time. He, he's not supposed to be this, like, donut, rich, confident billionaire. That's supposed to be, like, a middle-aged Batman. This is a young Batman. It takes heavy inspiration from the Year One comic book and cartoon. And I find that excellent, because year, Batman Year One is one of the greatest Batman cartoons out there. The animations, whatever you want to call it, anime. It's excellent. I recommend you watch it very much. But, yeah, this Bruce Wayne takes a lot of inspiration from that. He's very... He doesn't smile once in this film, and his acting... If, you, if you've only ever seen him in Twilight, you'll be shocked. His acting is amazing. And I find his Batman one of the most in, most intimidating portrayals. I mean, he combined the elements from um, Christian Bale, his voice, with Ben Affleck's voice recorder. It is a beautiful um, concoction. Here's a shot of Batman in his gear. Now, um, the thing you'll first notice about the suit when you're watching the film is it is... It, it looks bulletproof, and Batman in this film, he is bulletproof, bro. He takes so many shots in this film, and it's honestly scary to see him just walk through bullets like that. And you can see so much rage in his eyes, I and mean, that's one of the best things about this portrayal. He has a lot of rage behind his eyes. I don't know where he got that from, but um, I've taken drama myself. That's one of the hardest emotions to get down. Rage. I mean, I'm, and I'm saying, like, not questioning his acting skills. I'm saying, like, I he, he this is like the first portrayal of batman where they humanize the fact that his parents are dead he, they humble it they they think they say this happens to people all the time and batman and bruce wayne batman whatever you want to call it he struggles with the fact that this isn't something he's he he had it easy and he still has all this rage built up inside of him his the fight scenes in this are I've, i when i first watched it i um I actually didn't like them too much, and then after the film, after the fact, post, I was like, ah, oh, I see why they did that. They wanted a more realistic side to the fighting. It's very much a single wide shot fight it seems. There's no close ups, there's no bones breaking. It's it's wide shot, no music playing, just you hear punches connecting and you see bad guys spit flying. It is at first it was quite questionable whether I liked it, but I, afterwards I definitely did. To be perfectly honest, I didn't think we saw enough Alfred in this film. We saw a good maybe f um, ten minutes screen time between Bruce, between Bruce Wayne and Alfred's relationship in this film. I like this younger portrayal of Alfred. I like the connection we had with him at one point. It really and Batman's like you see the fear in Batman's eyes for the first time in the film. You're like, oh shit, something's happened. I'm not going to reveal what that is, but you know, I think the only thing that one of the first negatives I'll have to say. I think the talk where um, Bruce is like, you're not my father, happens far too early in this film. The, with a three hour runtime, there was there would have been a better time for it than, than like an hour into the film. Happens an hour into the film, not much character arc happening there. 
there right now. And there is a character arc, it might be hard to see, but after watching some other people's reviews, I see it. I see the character arc now. It is there, and it's quite impressive how well it blends in. Um, but yeah, other things, I'd just like to go back to Batman for a second. Um, it's a different take on Batman. This isn't straight up, like superhuman Batman, he's very human in this, he takes more punches than he gives and I think some people might not like that but he really picks up, he re his skill really picks up with the more angry he gets throughout the film, he gets angrier and angrier and he always, and he's questioning in this film whether he's having an effect on Gotham and every time he does something it seems to get worse and worse and worse and worse until he finally realises at the end he has to take, he has to change, he can't keep being fear like fear incarnated all he is is fear to criminals and he realises he needs to be more than that to the people of Gotham you, you can't like he realises you can't fix a wound just by just by constantly like bandaging it you need to you need you need you know what I'm saying like there's other ways to heal and he, he has to heal Gotham in other ways and that character out comes through very strong Catwoman in this film is excellent the best on screen portrayal of Catwoman we have seen she is she absolutely smashes it. She smashes the the feline vibe. This is this Catwoman is very realistic. She um she's a lesbo. She um, oh sorry that sounds offensive, but she's a lesbian. Um, in this film, different take. Uh, worked well. I didn't hate it. Um, they didn't go overboard like Black Widow with like the gender with like the LGBTQ plus whatever. They didn't go too overboard with it. It was balanced perfectly. Her costume is wonderful. It really like works well with the vibe of the film. Not too overboard, like like it has been in the past. It's not too cat-like. It's not a, like a literal cat costume. It's burglar outfit. She um the fight scene between her and Batman is beautifully um be beautifully like coordinated. I, I believe that's what you'd say. Um, very excellent work done on the relationship building between Batman and Catwoman is um, is also done very well, not too fast, not too slow, paced perfectly. We see back and forth between them in both aggressive and loving ways. It's um yeah, I think definitely the best on screen portrayal of Catwoman. She's not crazy, she's not utterly evil, she is she's like Yeah, she's the most balanced and in my opinion the best portrayal of Catwoman we have seen. I'm not going to talk about it too much because that might get into spoilers, but yeah. Falcone in this film, um, very great antagonist. He's here and there throughout the film. Riddler's the main antagonist, of course, and there's Penguin on the side as well, but Falcone's there, and you know, the the whole the whole Wayne's and Arkham story, that, that was great. If you've played Batman the Telltale series, you really will like, get throwbacks to that. They're very much taking inspiration from that, and I believe it is from a comic, but I just can't remember. My apologies. But yeah, I think this actor is a wonderful actor to choose for. Um, can't mind Falcone. He embodies the whole mob criminal, I'm your friend kind of guy, the persona, and it comes across very well. And I think his character um, is, I mean, yeah, he's writing in this film. He has some great lines, some really inspir not inspirational, but to Bruce, some inspiration to Bruce. And you know, I think he just, he was he was great to have in the background. I think sometimes if you put too many villains in a film, Spider-Man 3 is a great example, it co block, co block cogs, no, it waters it down, it makes them shallow. Carmine Falcone, because it's a three hour film, decent, very decent length film, especially for a Batman film, a solo Batman film, where most of the scenes are Batman. The, the scenes where he's talking to Batman slash Bruce Wayne, we get great character building in the back, like just in the background. It's not pushed onto you like it was in, like um, Suicide Squad one. It's not pushing. It's not making you care about characters or hate them, whatever. You don't hate or care about Carmine Falcone in this film. You are just you just wondering what his intentions are, and that that works really well. Because obviously you know Carmine Falcone is a villain if you're a Batman fan, but in this you really question whether he's got bad intentions or not. And um, and yeah. I'm not going to go into too much detail about anyone else in the film. I'm just going to talk about all the other antagonists. So if you have seen the film, please don't spoil it in the comments or anything like that. But yeah, let's move on. Now, in my opinion, one of the strongest parts of this film is the Riddler. This performance is excellent. This performance is scary. 
the horror scratches fit so well with this film. He f he full on seems like the Zodiac Killer took high inspiration from the film Zodiac and the Zodiac Killer in real life. The glasses on the outside of the mask. This character who really isn't as insane as he seems to be. He puts it on for attention and he has a genuine motive. This mo He has the same motive as Batman. He just puts a twist on it and it works very well. It's not cliche in the slightest. It is original and fresh and nice. The performance is absolutely flabbergasting. If you don't know what that word is, it basically means fantastic. It is absolutely out of this world. Um, with it, when we see him without the mask, I'm not saying any more than that, but when we see him without the mask, we see like this scared, this, this like OCD obsessed kid really really reminds me of the Arkham Arkham Games Riddler he panics at the first sign of like his plan going wrong he he reacts perfectly to the Batman he he seems omniscient om, om, omniscient omniscient the entire film he knows more than anyone else he's in the he's in the background even when he's not meant to be he's there grabbing Batman's attention at every corner he's he's honestly a great great antagonist in this film one of the best antagonists in any superhero film I think his performance will go down in history just like Heath Ledger's. I think this is on par with Heath Ledger's Joker. And you know, it it really like was nice to see such a well written, well thought out plot antagonist and overall like just writing. The writing in this film is fantastic. It's, the story there's like deeper lore built into this film around every corner. So if you did watch all this video and you did enjoy it, please do leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I'm trying to make my, I'm trying to make like my name known on here, um, and it mean it just it mean a lot because I like making videos and you know it always helps to know it's getting noticed. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the film if you watched it as well. Uh, I think this is a this is a beautiful beautiful start for DC. I think. Robert Pattinson deserves a trilogy. He definitely deserves a trilogy. This performance is amazing. Um, this this character is amazing. This new form, this new writing ways, this new like version of film, superhero film is amazing. And yeah, just I hope you enjoyed my overall rating. Will be a will be a solid nine out of ten. This is oh, it's just excellent. Words cannot describe how excited I am to see um, where they take this this new. DC Universe. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. See you later.